Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do this. Basically, a, um, a, a box trace that uh, uh, gets bigger and uh, gets to a certain length and uh, stops growing if the player doesn't hold down the key for long and <clears throat> basically doesn't do anything if the player only taps for a fraction of a second, just kind of does that. But basically you would use this if you wanted to do something like a like a flamethrower, or in my case, a flame spell. So I'll show you this in slow motion. So basically, um, when the flame starts, what we're doing is we're tracing to see where the flame hits. Since, uh, as far as I can tell, there's no really good practical way to do this in uh, like with like detecting where a Niagara effect is hitting, from what I from my understanding that would be awesome if that were were possible to just like detect what a Niagara effect hits, um, but that's basically kind of where we're at here. Um, I might want to add a little bit of a delay, but basically at, at like real time, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. Not too bad. There might be a little bit of inconsistency in where the uh, where the trace is hitting compared to where the flame is, but I think it's going to probably work pretty well. Anyway, this is uh, how we do this. So what we're what we'll do first, I'll actually just show you guys like the whole blueprint in case you just want to like copy the blueprint, uh, or basically copy the line trace. I'll just show you the whole thing. Um, and then you can honestly you can you can watch me talk you through it or you can just like kind of copy it that's what I usually do I just like to copy the copy the completed thing all at once and so it's nice to see like the whole screen so basically that's the line trace right there um, um, we use a timeline and then we do a couple other things so this is my spell so yeah for those of you who understand what this all means you can just copy that basically and then for the niagara effect uh that that's not really a part of this video but it it, it just kind of plays a niagara effect um i'm assuming that you probably have figured out how to spawn a niagara effect and it's the trace part like the collision damage part that's that's kind of a little bit trickier to figure out um so basically how this works is so um so these are just custom events doesn't matter it doesn't really matter you can trigger that whenever you want this is most most click most release basically play from start of timeline stop timeline and what the timeline does is it starts at uh, zero and it moves up to three thousand uh, uh, three thousand basically three thousand is the distance that I want the flame to travel I want the the trace to travel um, and then what this, what I'm doing here is we're setting we're just setting the fire length variable from the new track now in the timeline itself, and I'll show you how to do this really quick uh, in maybe just the new one. But I'll show give, show 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 you first quickly what we're gonna do. So we start out with zero zero. That's where the flame starts zero zero. Then I have like a a small cast time delay here, 0.2 seconds, just to time it up with the animation so that the the line trace doesn't start tracing until the animation sort of traces. And I I just have this intentional delay here. If you didn't want a small delay, you you didn't. You could basically just go to the next step, which is the distance. Uh, basically the next step is how many seconds it takes to get to 3000 distance. So in my case, it's one second to get to 3000 distance. And then what I've done over here is I've just added another 60 seconds on. Uh, so if the player holds down the button for like up to 60 seconds, because in my case, the spell won't be used for longer than 60 seconds at a time. So they basically just hold down the button and it will hold that value of 3000, uh, basically the maximum length of the flame effect. So then the box trace by channel, there's the size of the box, um, the kind of like the dimensions of the box, how tall it is, that sort of thing. Uh, what we do is we get the world location of the starting point of the flame. In my case, I'm just using a forward arrow uh, that is attached to my character's hand location, roughly, starting point of the spell. And then what I'm doing is I'm getting the forward vector of the arrow and then what I'm doing is I'm uh, multiplying the, 
or sorry, I'm uh, adding, what, what am I doing here? I'm doing the, um, I'm multiplying the forward vector times uh, the distance that I want the flame to travel. But the, remember, the flame starts at zero, and then it changes to 3,000. So basically the forward vector is the zero, and then it becomes longer until it gets to that 3,000 unreal units length, in my case, after one second. And then basically I'm uh, just adding that onto the world location forward vector, basically just plugging in like that. That's the end location. So start location, world location, end location, um, uh, like so. Uh, let's see, and that's it. That's actually the entire line trace. Um, so I'll show you guys again how that ends up looking, just the line trace part. And it uh, if, if I hold down the key, it'll just keep basically putting out that line trace, detecting what gets hit. If I let go, it stops. If I hold down for like a shorter amount of time, the flame travels at a certain distance, but then basically you're assuming the player stops, you know, using the flamethrower or casting the flame spell, whatever the case may be. And uh, so in my case, yeah, it kind of goes something like that. Actually, I meant to have a small delay on my fire effect because I want it to actually like start casting once the character um, fate, like puts their hand forward. So the flame effect starts a little soon in my example, but that's kind of irrelevant for the sake of this tutorial. Um, but yeah, that's it. So then basically what you all you would do is to, to detect what gets hit is you would just detect what what the you know what the what what the box trace hits and apply damage. So that's all pretty standard easy stuff. But um, okay, that's this video.